now, The Wonderful World of the World, Part 2. The 20th century must go down in history as the century of sport, thanks to the development of the electronic media. It was the radio which first brought sports events into the living room of the ordinary man. Who will ever forget those early broadcasts? And there's a left, and another left, and another left, and an uppercut, and a jolting right. Oh, he felt that one and went right to the midsection. And now they're just slugging it out, trading lefts and rights, nobody giving an inch. Oh, what a hockey game this is. After radio came television, and the first great TV sport was wrestling. They said it was fixed, but the TV cameras gave honest close-ups of this brutal sport. You think this is brutal? This is just the rehearsal. <laughs> the movies helped popularize the sport of boxing with a series of dramatic films starring Hollywood greats. John Garfield in Body and Soul. Humphrey Bogart in The Heart of They Fall. Anthony Quinn in Requiem for a Heavyweight. And Paul Newman in The Big Fight. <laughs> that doesn't look like Paul Newman. This is after The Big Fight. <laughs> Perhaps the classic scene of all boxing movies was in Golden Boy. The confrontation scene between the old Italian father and his son. Oh, oh, Francesco! My oh, boy! My oh, boy! Oh, please! I, I told you once and I'll tell you again, I don't want to hear any more about it. You're going to listen to me because I'm your papa! Papa, oh, oh, please, will you just leave me alone? I'm going to leave you alone until you hear every word I'm going to say to oh, you. Papa, oh, please, I know what you're going to say. I know what you're going to say. You don't like boxing. I hate boxing. That's uh, true. I hate it. You know why? It's uh, not for human beings. It's for animals. Oh, Papa. Oh, yes, animals. That's what they are. Why do they come to see pain? Blood, broken noses they come to see. Why? But, Pa, Pa, listen to me. Somebody has to go up into that ring and fight. I know, but why does it have to be me? <laughs> Spectator sports did not become universally popular until the last century. Their creators are immortalized in the Hall of Fame. This is the Marquis of Queensbury, the father of modern boxing. This is George Hallis, the father of professional football. This is Melvin Schwartz II. <laughs> Melvin Schwartz II, what's he the father of? Melvin Schwartz III. <laughs> Don't laugh, he's a very important figure in baseball. For those eyes? He's an umpire. <laughs> One of the most exciting spectacles in sport is football's famous Super Bowl. And what a thrill it is when the stars arrive at the airport. I'm a quarterback. I'm a fullback. I'm a guard. I'm a tight end. At the Super Bowl, the Goodyear blimp isn't the only thing that's flying. No report on sports would be complete without a look at the ladies and the games they play. Here is the gentler sex in action. They like to chat about the dresses they will wear tonight. They chew flat about their dresses and the neighbors fight. This week of sex, this week of sex, we want the males behold. But then we joke, we wouldn't trade them for a ton of gold. But that's a game, they're all the same. It's just a game, they call it girl talk. One of the major problems athletes must face is what to do when their career is over. Yes, is there life after sport? <laughs> well, there's always the movies. Today's football hero is tomorrow's screen idol. Of course, sometimes there can be difficulties making the transition from football star to movie star. Quiet, quiet, everybody! Quiet! Right, let's hear the director. All right, all right, now, kids, now pay attention. As you know, this picture is budgeted at $9 million, $4 million of which is going to our star. <laughs> our studio is very proud to have him with us for his very first movie, the ace quarterback of the Green Bay Crackers, the one and only Off-Broadway Joe Yablonski. <laughs> 
Well, Joe, we know this is your first film, but we don't want you to be nervous. We're all with you. Thanks a lot, Coach. Director. A uh, director. All right, now, everybody, please take their places. Let's get the show Okay, off. let's no, get... No, no, just a minute, Joe. You're back there. Oh, that, that chair has my name on it. Oh, no, no, that's later. Later, you see. Oh, now okay. we go to work. All right? Okay. All right, fine. Now, kids, as we all know, this is a war movie. The story of the Filthy Five. Five dirty, ruthless killers who were organized into a special squad to win World War II. Rizzo, wanted for murder in six states. Fernier, a deserter from the French Foreign Legion. Burton, a disbarred lawyer. Wachachevsky, a man who stole from the United Appeal. And Rodney Armitage, a college student who hates Joan Baez. All right, now, men, as you know, this is the climax of the picture. You're out of ammunition. You're pinned down by an enemy machine gun, and it looks like curtains for the Filthy Five. Everybody ready? You ready, Joe? Ready, Coach Erector. <laughs> Let's make this a good one. Will you slate it, please? The Filthy Five, scene two, take one. Roll them. Speed. Action. Sergeant, what do you think? We haven't got a chance. You sure? We're pinned down, we're out of ammo. All we got left is this one lousy grenade. Hit the dirt! Well, what if we can get that machine gun with this grenade? Are you kidding? It's 200 yards. Who can throw a grenade that far? Well, it's our only chance. All right, you guys. Which one of you's got a good arm? Hey, Lieutenant, I throw pretty good. I used to play college football. All right, Armitage. Remember, this is our last grenade. Make it good. Okay. All right, you lousy krauts. Think this one's for the gipper. What's going on here? Joe, Joe, what are you doing? What do you mean, what am I doing? You were supposed to throw it. I know. So why didn't you? I couldn't find any receivers open, so I carried it myself. <laughs> Lunch. This, then, has been a look at sport, the symbolic, ritualistic glorification of man's desire to compete with his fellow man. Perhaps someday in the future, a happier substitute for war. Or politics. <laughs> well, good night. Good night. And now, here's the band of the year. Wayne and Schuster's Sweet Grandmother. Who's in the strawberry patch with Charlie? Now that he's not picking them with me. Oh, no, I don't care what they're doing there. Need the shade. One more time. Where'd you roll, 
for one more time. <laughs> by the clock on a wall that it's time to bid you one and all goodbye goodbye so long so long farewell farewell adieu adieu be good stay well bye bye keep warm relax and eat take care stay loose adieu mon vieux à la prochaine goodbye till when we meet again Additional writing, Aubrey Tadman and Gary Farrier. This is Bernard Cowan speaking.